Bunda Dimenatza. My name is Peter Pearson. I'm here with my colleague Sue Hall. We're consultants with Library Strategies, which is a consulting group with the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library in St. Paul, Minnesota in the United States. We are working with Bibliomet uh, in two areas. Last fall we were here in Romania to help libraries develop a national advocacy plan and we have returned to work with four specific libraries to help them develop support organizations called Friends of the Library. And today's webinar talks about how to develop a Friends of Library group. In the United States, Friends of Library groups have been in existence in many communities for over 100 years. But creating a Friends group here in Romania is a new and innovative concept. A Friends group has the power to really make significant changes in the way your library is viewed and valued in the community. The library can be and is the cornerstone of democracy in communities and it provides access for all of our citizens. Friends groups are a tool for helping to create that civic engagement in the democratic process. So creating a friends group for your library in Romania will truly be a life-changing experience for the citizens of your community. There are a number of reasons that it's beneficial for libraries to have friends groups. Friends groups expand your library's capacity in many, many ways. They provide support to the library through a variety of capacities uh, that most libraries can only find ways of continuing to expand once they've created a friends group. Friends members are a voice for your library in the community. Friends members believe in the library and they speak to other people in the library, in the community about your library, which makes them just very powerful spokespeople. They're able to talk to the media, to businesses and civic organizations. So in a way, Friends members become the public relations and marketing group for your library. Friends members expand your library's network. Library staff generally only come in contact with the people who come into the library. Friends members have connections and influence with a much broader, diverse population. Friends members can raise the visibility and share the value of the library in the community, helping to make it a much more respected and revered organization in the community. Friends members are strong advocates to local elected officials. The messages that come from a friends member, a volunteer, uh, to elected officials are much stronger than coming from library staff. When a member of the friends organization goes to the elected officials and said, says our library is extremely important to our community, it carries a much greater weight than if a library staff person or the library director was going to the elected official. Friends members are extensions of your staff in the community. They know the library well, they talk about the library, and they can provide information also about what the community needs so that they bring back information to the library staff about what community members need in terms of library services and library programs. Most importantly, friends can help you raise funds for your library. Uh, friends members give to the library themselves, but they also provide access to friends and colleagues and neighbors and businesses who can also contribute money to your library. In a very important way, friends are like your free employees. In today's webinar, we're going to go over 10 steps to creating an effective friends group. And of course, we want you to know before you begin thinking about a friends group, the most important thing is to create a plan. And if you check the IREX website, there's a template there to help you in planning for your friends group. Step one, how can a friends group help your library? You need to really know what it is you want your friends group to accomplish for you. Each library has unique needs from its community. Perhaps your library needs to have volunteers who will actually work in the library. Or perhaps what's most important to you is that friends serve as advocates for your library, talking to your elected officials about the importance of strong funding for the library. Perhaps you have a need to access business and civic organizations to see how they can help the library. Or do you need friends to expand your network for public awareness? Most libraries have a very difficult time getting the message out to the community. And libraries themselves often are not the best marketers and communicators about this. Friends can help in a very special way to do this. And finally, fundraising. 
Do you need additional funds to provide for some of the enhancements that you'd like to have from your library? But of course, it's very important when you think of private fundraising to not replace the money that comes from your community. There needs to be strong public funding for the library as well as private enhancement funding. You need to involve your library staff as you plan for your friends group. The library staff, of course, will have a great understanding of what some of your needs might be. The second step in creating a friends group is to clearly define the role that your friends group will play for your library and in the community. The first thing that you want to do is write a purpose statement. This purpose statement can be a very informal document that basically lays out what role or what purpose you would like to have your friends members play. Eventually this purpose statement will be used to create a mission statement that will be a more formal definition of what the purpose of your friends group is. Your purpose statement might address things like the friends members or our friends organization will help in the library. They'll support our library staff by volunteering in the library, shelving books, giving library tours, uh, doing readings at children's programs. Uh, they can assist with other library programs. If you do programs for seniors or you do programs out in the community where you take books or services to community members, your friends members can help with this. Friends members are usually strong advocates for your library, either informally or more formally by taking the library's needs to your elected officials. Friends members should always be raising the awareness and the visibility of the library in the broader community. They are an extension of your library staff and what goes on inside your library. Hopefully friends members will also help you raise funds for the library, for your programs and your services. Third step in the process of developing your friends group is to apply for nonprofit status. Research what you need to do in creating a friends group to become a nonprofit organization. It's very important for the credibility of the organization that you create an NGO for your friends group. This is the only way that the friends will be able to accept charitable contributions from individuals. In doing that, you're going to need to write articles of incorporation and bylaws. This is something that you can do yourself, or you can hire an attorney to help you with the process, or hopefully you can get an attorney to provide pro bono service in this area. You're also going to need at least three individuals to be called founders of your new organization. You can have more than three, but it's a minimum of three individuals who need to sign the articles of incorporation documents for your organization. Sue referred previously to the fact that you'll need to write a mission statement that describes what the purpose of the organization is. And most importantly, there is a financial obligation in creating a nonprofit organization. You're going to need between 1,000 and 2,000 lay to create your NGO. The fourth step in creating a friends group is to start with a core group of people who will help you get the foundation of the friends organization in place. We recommend that you create a planning team. Recruit two to three individuals who you know well and know your library well and who are well connected to your community. These may be former elected officials, business or civic leaders, respected community members, people who come into your library often and who know it and you feel are going to be able to provide access to other people in the community to help you set up your friends organization. These two to three members will be your planning team. Um, and they will help you create um, a board of directors and begin to form the organizational structure for your friends organization. The planning team will serve as the core group of members for your board of directors. And they will determine the structure of the organization. Whether or not your friends organization will have officers, what types of committees, the board of directors will need to have to support your mission, how often you will meet, and all of the other logistics to creating an NGO. Step five is deciding what it should cost to be a Friends member. Members of the Friends are different than the board of directors of the Friends. The board should be recruited from individuals uh, who have influence in the community and are able to open doors for the organization. Members of the Friends, however, should be everybody in the community. 
You'd want every individual who loves the library, who's interested in supporting the library, to be a member at some level. Most friends organizations charge some level of dues or an annual fee. It's simply a way for them to show their support of the library. It's also important, however, that you make available to people a no-cost membership. The reason you want to have no-cost memberships available or free memberships is it's important to show the large number of people who want to be friends with the library. This has an impact on the elected officials to be able to say that so many people in the community support the library and are friends members. You'll need to determine the cost of annual dues. The annual dues is not a very large figure in many cases. It's different than a financial contribution to the organization, so you want to keep your dues at a very minimal level. Because you're charging dues, you'll want to figure out some level of benefits that an individual would get by becoming a member of your organization. Oftentimes, friends groups will put out newsletters several times a year. They might do mailings to the members about a special program that's happening in the library. You may want to even have special recognition for your friends within the library. In some libraries, they have a special library card for people who are members of the Friends. It might be a different color, or it might have a sticker attached to it that indicates that you're a special supporter of the library. Friends members also might have the opportunity to be invited to member-only events, something special in the library that only a member of the Friends can attend. And lastly, you may want to consider allowing Friends members to have special access to your library director, getting a private tour of the library, or hearing from the library director about some of the upcoming activities at the library. The next step, step six, in creating a friends group is very important. Your, this step involves recruiting a board of directors. These are the individuals who are going to get your friends organization off the ground and ensure that it's got a stable foundation and is ready to grow into a solid support organization for your library. The first thing that you're going to want to do is have your planning team or your core members write a description of what the board of directors will do to support your library, basically what their responsibilities are. And you can look to the first steps and the second steps in this plan to reference what it is that that organizational structure and how the board of directors is going to support the library, what that's going to look like, and then that will become the description of your board of directors' responsibilities. Once you have determined what the responsibilities are for the board as a whole, you'll write a job description for individual board members. We've put a sample job description on the IREX website. Essentially, you want to tell people that they are expected to attend board meetings, that they are expected to sit on and participate in the board committees, that they're expected to make a financial contribution to the library, to support the library and the community when they talk to other individuals or businesses or civic organization, and in general, to be a very strong supporter in the of the library in any way that they can. To recruit individual new board members, what you want to do is to come up with a list of six, eight, ten individuals in the community to start with to be able to go out and invite them personally to become a member of the board of directors. You're going to want to take information about the board, about the friends organizations, and about the library. Generally, we recommend that someone who knows the individual you're recruiting is the person to go and meet with that person and invite them to become a member of the board of directors of the friends organization. This is a very special thing that you're asking someone to do. You're asking them to join an organization that's brand new and has tremendous potential in the community. Becoming a core board member for a friends organization is one of the most important things that that individual can do to contribute back to the community that they live in. In St. Paul and in other organizations, being on the board of directors of a friends organization is a very uh, important very respected elite position and it's important to be able to communicate this to the people that you're recruiting. Once the board of directors has been recruited, then it's time to create the organizational structure for your friends group. First, you'll need to look at a committee structure. The committees of the organization should follow the mission of the organization. So if a strong part of your mission is fundraising, there needs to be a fundraising committee to help make that happen. 
If public awareness is going to be one of the primary focus areas of the organization, you'll need a public awareness committee. The same with advocacy and cultural programming. Those four committees tend to be the core of most fringe group activities. Second, another organizational structural issue that's extremely important is to develop term limits for the board members who you've recruited. As Sue has mentioned, the board of directors and the recruitment of that board is a very important part of creating your friends group. You want the most influential individuals possible to serve on your friends board. You also want people in the community, though, to view your organization as one that's dynamic and changing. And in order for it to be viewed that way, there has to be a change in the board of directors that happens on a regular basis. If members of the board of directors serve indefinitely, it's going to be viewed as an organization that's not open to change and new ideas. So it's constantly important for an organization to have that new infusion of board members on a regular basis. And to accomplish that, most organizations create a nominating committee. And the nominating committee is probably one of the most important committees for your organization because that's the committee that's going to determine how good the board of directors is. Once your committee structure is established, you should write a description of that committee's responsibilities. What will a cultural programming committee do? What does a public awareness committee need to accomplish? What kind of fundraising activities will be taken on by the organization? Following that, we need to set a meeting schedule for the board of directors as well as the various committees. Most members of a board of directors aren't interested in attending meetings on a monthly basis. If possible, it's best to organize meetings every other month or even four times a year. Most of the members of a friend's organization want to spend the majority of their time doing the activities for which they have a passion rather than attending the board meetings. Board meetings tend to be more a time to check in about the activities of the committee. And finally, as part of your structural organizational structure, you need to set goals for the committees. Set fundraising goals, set advocacy goals, number of programs for cultural programming, even membership goals would be a good thing for organizations to set up at this time. The next step in your friends organization is to go out and recruit friends members from the general public. The difference from the members that you've already recruited is that these will be broad supporters of your library. They may not serve on the board of directors, or they may in the future. Um, they are certainly welcome to serve on committees, but basically these are people who are lending their verbal and financial support to the organization by saying that they're a friend of the library. In order to recruit broad, broadly from your community, it would be a good to start out with a marketing plan. A plan that sets out how you are going to go out into the community and recruit new members, not just initially, but on into the future of your friends' organizations. Creating a marketing plan is a great way to start. It will be um, helpful because you're going to develop some materials that talk about your friends' organization to create a logo and a visual identity for the friends. Usually a friends' logo is different from that of your library, but enough alike that you can connect the two. Once you've created a visual identity for the friends, it would be used to create brochures and posters, um, to have on stationery, on invitations, anything that would let people know in the community when they see it that this is something that's coming from the Friends of the Library. The other thing that you can do in marketing your Friends organization to the broader public is to use the local media. Create stories or uh, press releases for radios, for the newspaper, for television. Social marketing is a great way to reach out, particularly to a younger audience. Use Facebook, emails, and we recommend that if your community allows it, that you send a letter of invitation along with a friend's brochure to anyone who holds a library card in your community. We suggest that you have library staff distribute friends brochures when patrons are checking out books, put it in the book and ask them if they wouldn't like to please think about becoming a member of the Friends. We would say that you would definitely want to invite your new Friends members to become more active, serve on a committee. The committees do not have to be made up only of the board of directors. And if someone has an interest in programming or in marketing and public awareness or in advocacy, definitely invite that person to become a member of the committee. 
It is not restricted only to board members. The important thing to remember is that Recruiting Friends board members is an ongoing task. Many Friends organizations throughout the United States have an annual Friends Recruitment Week where there is a big push in the community and in the library to recruit new members. You always want to be increasing the number of Friends members in your community because this is your way of sending the message to everyone that being a Friends member and supporting the library is a growing issue and something that your community residents feel is extremely important. Step nine is actually engaging in the activities that will support your library. For instance, to raise visibility of your library and to provide financial support, Friends groups could engage in public awareness activities. They could raise funds through either book sales or bake sales, personal solicitations, or a program that many Friends groups have incorporated called the Book Memorial Program, where an individual can recognize somebody's birthday or special occasion by buying a book plate that goes inside of a book. They pay the money to the library and the book plate is placed into one of the newly purchased books at the library and makes a wonderful gift for people who don't know what type of gift to buy for another individual. Advocacy, of course, is a very important part of every Friends organization. I would hope that each Friends organization created would take this on as one of its primary purposes. And the reason this activity is so important is because advocacy from individuals in the community is so much more effective than when library staff themselves try to advocate for the library. When the library director goes to the elected officials and requests more funding for the library, the elected official is not tempted to change what they believe the budget should be. But if a citizen who has nothing personal to gain from this comes to them and asks for additional funds for the library, that makes a very strong case that the elected officials will listen much more closely. The final step to remember in creating and sustaining a friends organization is that you have to continue to have that organization grow. It should have more members, it should have more activities, and it should certainly have more influence in the community. Again, it's important to remember to continually recruit new friends members. You want your organization to grow in stature and in numbers. It's, it's also essential that you continually be on the lookout for new members for the board and for committees. Fresh blood, new ideas, new people to bring enthusiasm to the library and to the Friends organization is critical to being able to have a Friends organization that's thriving. You want to have regular meetings and communication between the library director and the board of directors. Communication so that both the organization, the Friends organization, and the library know what each organization is doing is really critical. It's important for the board members to be able to say, this is, these are the new wonderful things that are going on in our library. And it's important for the library director to know what it is that the friends members are passionate about and how they feel that they can best support the library. We recommend that soon after your organization is up and running and has some time behind it, that you publish an annual report. The purpose of an annual report is to tell funders and individuals in the community, businesses, civic organizations, what it is that your friend's organization has been doing, how it's been successful, how many members it has, what programs it's helped the library put on. If people have made individual contributions to the library through the friend's organization, you can list those individuals so that they get additional recognition for having made a contribution to the library. It's also good for the Friends Organization to have an annual meeting for the board, the members of the committees, and even invite members of the general public to come and just celebrate the success of the organization on an annual basis. Finally, it's really important to evaluate your successes. Uh, once a year, the board of directors should look at all of their goals, their activities, and determine what worked really well. What do we want to do again next year? or what do we maybe want to change, what didn't work well, and see if there are new and different ways that they can provide support for the library. There are a couple of key points that we'd like you to remember when you create a friends group. It's a very, very powerful tool to support your library. Creating a friends organization is really creating a very strong extension of your library in many ways. 
it provides more people to help with your work, it provides a voice in the community, it provides connections to businesses and organizations, funders, individual and business, corporate and foundations. Uh, it provides a much greater network than the library or the library staff could hope to do on their own. Being a Friends member or a Friends board member is something to be extremely proud of, particularly in Romania where this is the first time you will be doing something like this. It's a, being a Friends member and creating a for, Friends organization is a vehicle for contributing to the lifestyle and the richness of your community. It's a prestigious organization to belong to. Friends can create a better future for your library and your community. They are an organization that are going to be extremely powerful in taking the libraries of Romania to the next level. It's clear to us that libraries in Romania have tremendous potential and they've grown very, very much through the BiblioNet program. But we've seen in working the last week with four libraries that they have also identified tremendous ways that a friends organization can continue to help expand that capacity. In, in addition to being a, a consultant, I'm also the president of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library in Minnesota. The Friends of the St. Paul Public Library is a very unique organization. It's 65 years old, and as a result of that, the Friends now has paid staff who conduct many of the activities of the organization. We do fundraising for the library, we do advocacy on an annual basis, and we also do cultural programming. Those are the three things that we do. We believe the most important role we play is our role in advocacy. As a result of the Friends doing an annual advocacy campaign with the Mayor of St. Paul and the St. Paul City Council, the budget for the library has been protected over many years. For over 18 years, we've been conducting an annual advocacy campaign that has resulted in adding millions of dollars to the library's public funding for its budget. Many other city departments in St. Paul have had large cuts over those years because they don't have an organization that advocates for them like the Friends of the Library do. In the area of fundraising, the Friends provides over $1 million each year in support for the St. Paul Public Library. We do fundraising from individuals, we write grant applications to foundations and corporations, and we also conduct plan giving activities, asking people to leave money in their will to the library. And in our final area of our mission, our cultural programming, this has become a very important part of the Friends mission. We conduct over 100 cultural programs every year in the city of St. Paul. We have these programs at all 13 of the branch locations of the library. And we believe that this is a gift to the community to provide these free programs in the library. What we've presented to you in this webinar is a model for creating a Friends group. There are friends groups all across the United States that are large and small. Some only engage in one or two activities or have only a single focus in their communities. In larger cities, friends organizations are much more powerful, stronger, bigger organizations. Some, like the Friends of the St. Paul, actually have paid staff. It's important for Romanian libraries to remember that what we're presenting to you is only a model. There are only suggestions for creating a friends organizations. Romanian libraries have to make friends organizations their own. And they can do it in any way that they choose so that it best supports their library and the mission of their library and how they interact in their own communities. The important part is to remember that this is a very powerful organization that you take the time to create a structure and a group of people who will be the founding members of your friends organization and who will take this organization to new levels every year into the future so that there will be new support for your libraries and there will be so many more people who are available to support your library. Um, this is the model that has worked for us in the United States and it's worked very differently in many communities in the United States. What you need to do here in Romania is find the best process and the best model for you. Having worked with the four Romanian libraries that we engaged with in the past week, we've seen a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and creativity and a unique approach to creating friends organizations. We believe that you're well on your way to creating wonderful friends organizations in Romania.